Well, hello, I'm Deanne Paul. I've been an echo sonographer for 15 years, and I love what I do. I was at home for 14 years with my kids and then went back to school, so I absolutely love what I do. I always feel like I'm paying tribute to my mom because she had heart disease. What I'm going to do today is give you, explain to you what an echo is, and then I'm going to tell you hints for you as patients on what to look for to help you with keeping your medical records. The first thing is I'm going to tell you the definition of what an echo is. An echo is a test that's utilizing the ultrasound waves to view the heart. So now we're doing a different modality than all the others. We're using sound waves to image the heart. And this is just a, a simple diagram, but the transducer would be connected to my echo machine, but I couldn't get that picture on there. So, And this is showing from the transducer is emitted sound waves and they're emitted in this sector, and what we do basically is go up and down the heart, and that's how we're scanning. And that's where it can get its very fine movements. The other thing is what does an echocardiogram show? An echo shows the physical structures of your heart, including the heart chambers and the valves. We do a um, thorough examination of the valves, and we also look at the heart chambers and measure the size of it. A big part that echo plays is we get the flows across the valves, and that's really important. This is an echocardiogram. We look at everything upside down with ours. The top part is ventricles, and the bottom part is the atrium. The white part is the muscle of the heart, and the black is blood that's in the heart. Now I'm going to tell you what is an echosonographer looking for. <laughs> this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a cause of an abnormal heart sound, which would be if your doctor detected a murmur, then I'm going to try to find out what could be causing that murmur. We're going to inspect the size of your heart chamber, so we do measurements to see how, your, um, how all the sizes of your heart are, if they're large, small, um, whatever it would be for you. Then we're also going to check for fluid around the heart. If you would happen to be getting any kind of fluid that could build up around the heart, Echo's going to show that. And then we also analyze the pumping capability. So if someone's had a heart attack, we can see if a chamber or if a wall of the heart is not moving as it should be. Echo would show that right away. And let me give you another picture here. And this is just, a, again, a, another simple diagrams. But the top part is that same echo picture with color now added. And it's color Doppler. That's the same thing if you see um, the guy giving the weather report. We can put color on, and the color gives us a direction that the blood's flowing. So we can tell if there's leaks. We can tell if there's turbulent flow. Anything like that, we, that is a huge help to us putting the color on. Then the bottom part, again, is another illustration showing the ventricles up at the top and the atrium at the bottom. Now I want to tell you what, as patients, and I was looking at it from this side with going through everything with my mom, what I learned, and just people um, that I know and have seen come through. This is what I would tell you from my perspective, what a patient should look for. And the very first thing I'd look for is a compassionate staff. You need to have someone that you right away you can talk to because you, you are probably going to have repeated echoes. And it's, it also, that you're a help to me when I know that a patient's understanding, they know why I'm bugging them to give me that good breath and everything. So we all can work together that way. Anyone that I train, I tell them you, you need to treat them like they're a member of your family. Any patient that comes through, it may be the hundredth time for you, but it could be their first time. Uh, another thing that I definitely would do, and many of you probably don't know because we aren't per se licensed, but we are licensed by two registry, and that is a form of echosonographer's license. And those two are the ARDMS, which is American Registry of Diagnostic Sonographers, or CCI, which is a Cardiac Credentialing International. In order to get these certificates, we have to take a lot of tests, physics, 
everything about it. So you are very much tested. It's tough and it's a real honor. And I, if that's the first thing I would say, make sure they are registered sonographer. Then you know that they've taken that extra step. And then the other thing I would say too is make sure that you get a thorough examination. Uh, the first exam minimum, and I'm talking actual scan time, that's not bringing you in, getting you ready, 30 to 40 minutes minimum. And I generally almost always do longer, but that first time you really need to, they really need to look everything, look everywhere that we ha can. I would say at the end of your echocardiogram, always be sure to ask for a copy of the CD or tape, and it is no problem. If they can't do it that day, they'll tell you, but you have that right through your medical records to get that. And a copy of the dictated report after it's been dictated by the doctor and a final copy, get that to keep with it and keep for your own medical records. This is gonna help your family, this is gonna help your doctors in your treatment, everything, and then you're never going to have the problem of then a doctor asking for a report or a thing and go, you can't find it in medical records. Guess you already got it. So any test you have, make sure you get a copy and know your results. And I would also encourage, I know the one gentleman asked uh, that he didn't understand it. That's where it's good. You could take that to your doctor and ask him to explain what you don't understand. Thank you.